Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. Thank you for joining us. And I would like to introduce uh, my guests today. And from my immediate right and going around, I have June Cases, who is the nurse leader in the Beverly Public Schools. Welcome, June. Thank you. And I have Mark Panchwani. Did I pronounce that right, Mark? You did. Okay. <laughs> and Mark is a sergeant with the Beverly Police Department. And next to him is Chris Silverstein. And Chris is the president of the uh, Beverly School Committee. Mm -hmm. And opposite me, I have Mark Thomas. And Mark is assistant principal here at Beverly High School. Thank well, you for joining for me. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and uh, if viewers might ask, what do these folks here all have in common, that they're all sitting here next to me on the set? And uh, they are all members of an organization here in Beverly called Be Healthy Beverly. And uh, the mission of Be Healthy Beverly covers a lot of different territory. And today we're going to focus on one issue, and that is opioid abuse and how to prevent it and how the community deals with that. And so we'll get a perspective on that from each of our guests from their point of view. So I'd like to start off uh, with you, Chris Silverstein. Um, if you could kind of tell us where does the uh, Be Healthy Beverly, what, it, what, is, what is it about? Where did it start? What's its general mission? And kind of po uh, focus in the direction of substance abuse prevention. Okay, so... Um, we are an we're actually an offshoot of a bigger group um, called Be Healthy Beverly that started with an initiative from the North Shore YMCA. And at the time when that group was in existence, their focus was on healthy living. Um, and they have done a tremendous job bringing um, gardening and nutrition information and exercise and healthy living uh, information to students in our public schools. And this um, offshoot group organized specifically around substance abuse prevention when there was a regional grant available. And we were asked to put together a group of people um, to work on how could we use some money to do some work around the city um, specific to uh, risky behavior, uh, substance abuse prevention sort of, um, sort of work. So we are a group that meets about once a month um, we've been meeting, boy, maybe five years now. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time when you yes. think back. Um, and um, we are police officers. We are nurse leaders. We have students in our group. We typically have somebody from the YMCA who keeps us organized. And I'll give a shout out to Nikki here. She <laughs> does a bang up job keeping us organized. And, um, you know, we work in regional partnership or across the North Shore. So we draw some information and maybe I say, say inspiration from the Danvers Cares Group, which is also working on the same sort of grant, and from the um, Healthy Gloucester Collaborative. So, um, you know, we sort of work together to, to put together some information around prevention and education around substance abuse prevention for our community. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, very good. Thank you very much for that, Chris. And I'd like to start off um, with, uh, with Sergeant Panjwani. And, and Mark, um, you know, when, when people think about the police and about opioid, you know, all they can think of is that they carry Narcan, and Narcan is some magic <laughs> elixir mm -hmm. or whatever. But maybe you can, you can um, tell us about some of the activities that the police department is involved in and what you personally are involved with in, in, uh, in coping with this, uh, with this epidemic. Sure. So um, the police department recognized uh, a need um, to start to carry Narcan in, in, the, in our police cruisers. Um, our EMS ambulance folks have carried Narcan for, you know, 30 or 30 plus years. Um, but we've noticed that police are, um, you know, we arrive on scene first. So we've, we've taught our, our officers to uh, recognize signs and symptoms of an overdose and then to treat it accordingly with Narcan, um, which has been uh, very effective. We've been carrying that for about three years now. Yeah. Now, if someone uh, if someone isn't uh, under the influence and you give them Narcan, does it have de deleterious effects, or is it sort of benign if, if you're not, you know, if you if you haven't been taking opioids? Right. So there's no um, there's no ill effect if you give it to someone. Um, some of sometimes it's been given to people that maybe were intoxicated under influence of liquor, mm -hmm. they've been given Narcan and it has no, uh, no ill effect. So it, it can do no harm, 
but it can certainly help when, when needed. Yeah. And I know that the Beverly Police Department does a lot of educational activities informing the community and, and, and uh, giving information to the community. How, how, do, you, how do you do that, uh, Sergeant? Yeah, we've been involved in a, a lot of nonprofit agencies have come to us to uh, help us educate about um, what to look for in overdoses, educate them on how uh, to uh, use Narcan. So we've been, uh, we've been in the public teaching. We've helped with the school department, um, doing some right. education there to help them get Narcan into the schools just in case. Um, so we, we've done a lot to, to get the word out um, on how to treat an overdose. Yeah. And I know some of our viewers might have heard of the, the community impact unit that, that is in the police department. Tell us what the community impact unit is and what its uh, mission is. Uh. Sure. So how it relates to uh, drug overdoses or uh, anything drug related. Um, if, if one of our officers, if we're on a call that involves an overdose, um, the officer will you know, we'll treat the patient, the EMS will get them to the hospital, and then a report is generated. And then this report is forwarded to our community impact unit. And this is a unit of a sergeant and a, and a police officer, and um, their sole role is to, to work in this unit. So they, um, we try to get them uh, within three days to do a follow-up um, to the individual that overdosed and their mm -hmm. family. So they'll go and they, they have a civilian uh, drug abuse counselor that goes with them. Mm -hmm. And they will, um, they will talk to the individuals that provide more Narcan, they'll provide them resources to get uh, help, whether it's rehabilitation or counseling or um, a number of things, because it takes often people overdose several times before it finally, before finally it, yeah. clicks. Yeah. And I know you also have a, a monthly uh, high-risk task force meeting. So who, who attends that, and, and what's, what's the purpose of that meeting? Yeah, so about uh, a year and a half ago, we, we decided um, as a community just to uh, involve first responders. So uh, once a month, representatives from the police department, fire department, our EMS, health department, and uh, someone from Beverly Hospital and the court. So everyone that is kind of on the front lines helping people. Um, we meet and we, um, we identify individuals that basically are at risk for dying, you know, ultimately for dying. So we, we kind of identify them and we develop a plan um, to help them, whether it's, you know, gather other resources and go right to where they are and, and try to, you know, prevent them from, from mm -hmm. doing any further harm. And it, yeah. it's been very effective. Yeah. Now, are these people who are incarcerated or have been, or are they in institutions, or are they, are they, are they living at home? Who, who might these people be? Uh, it's a variety of, of people, um, whether they're living at home, whether they're living on the streets, um, maybe in a shelter, um, whether they've just gotten released from custody or they're back in. Mm -hmm. we, we deal with them. Um, you know, a, a broad range of circumstances. Yeah, to yeah, prevent recidivism and so forth. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, June Kazis, June, uh, yes. you you are the nurse leader in the Beverly Public Schools, and I know a lot of our viewers might not even know that that there is such a person as you. <laughs> Maybe before we start talking about this, can you like in in, in uh, very briefly tell us what what is your mission as as the the nurse leader in in the school system? Well, thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I am, uh, well, I, I basically oversee health services. I supervise the, um, the nursing services. Um, we have a staff of nurses in our schools. And um, also, I act as a community liaison for, um, for agencies such as Be Healthy Beverly, for bootstraps and sort of um, I am the representative in these groups and um, sort of coordinate programs and care that would affect the health and wellness. Um, I also am um, administ the administrator of the Health and Wellness Advisory Committee okay. that's held um, four times a year. Now, I, I know that there, there are a lot of acronyms here that I know I've just become a member of, of the Be Healthy Beverly uh, Committee. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of acronyms, so I'm going to ask you to explain. Uh, there's something called SBIRT, uh, Screening, Brief Intervention, Referral to, to Treatment. treatment. Yes. Maybe you can explain to us what, what that SBIRT is and, and what its purpose is. And we refer to it as SBIRT. SBIRT, um, okay. So, and you, you've given what it is. It is it's a process in which we, um, it, it's a one-page survey 
interview um, that we um, conduct for our students uh, in grade seven and nine. This is now a mandated program um, from the governor's office. And what it does, it just, um, it helps us identify students that might be at high risk for substance abuse. Um, so should they need any further counseling, whether it be on the school level, or if it's determined by our counseling staff, because the screenings are held by our nurses and counselors, um, then they are, are a, a program is created for them. Um, and, and so it becomes very individual. It's completely anonymous and parents do have the option to opt out of the program. Mm -hmm. um, they are informed at the beginning of each school year as to when the screenings are going to be held. So they have time to do that. And they're optional. It is optional, it is. like all of our mandated screenings. Okay, so so you're you're pretty sure that the people that because they want to to uh, report that they're giving you uh, uh, actual uh, information. They're not. They're they're giving you true information, correct? Well, yeah. yes. I mean, certainly there may be a level of false positives, but we feel that it's still a very valuable program because we end up getting to meet a lot of students that we typically wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And um, they and establish a relationship that they know that they have people that they can come to in the school, mm -hmm. should it not be at the time of the screening, but it could be later on. Yeah. Um, so. And, and how long have you been doing the ESPER? This will be the third year for the ninth graders, and it will be our second year for seventh grade. Yeah. And are you able to assess the effectiveness of it? How, how has it been? Well, Yes and no. I mean, I guess it's a lot of it is still anecdotal at this point. Um, it's it's a matter of how many students that we I, I guess are in disciplinary um, or having disciplinary actions taken for any kind of incident involving substances. Um, how many visits to the nurse's office for certain complaints that we could relate to it. Mm -hmm. um, how many people actually come back afterwards and say, you know, I had a question about that. I really wanted to talk to you about it. So that has happened. It has also happened with the counselors as well. Yeah. Now, I, I uh, didn't realize this, but as, as we talked to the sergeant, you, well, I mean the mm -hmm. school uh, authorities, also have access to Narcan. Is that is that correct? We do. Um, in place, thanks to uh, Sergeant here, yeah. we um, we have gotten each of the schools a dose of Narcan to have in our sort of our emergency toolbox. Yeah. We like to think of it as yeah. we do with EpiPens and any and AEDs. It's just something else that we can do to save a life, yeah. should need be. Yeah. Now, June, can I ask you, have you ever, or has have, have the schools ever needed to use Narcan during the school day on students? Well, we have not. Um, we have only had it available since the maybe June of last year. So thus far, no, we have not. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a good sign, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that <laughs> would be. <laughs> uh, now, let me ask you, there was a survey taken last year. It's called the YRBS survey. Yes. And maybe you can explain to our viewers Okay. what exactly the YRBS survey is and, and what, how that helps you. Um, this is the Youth Risk Behavior Survey that I believe we run every several years. I believe the last one, the last one we administered was in 2017. Prior to that, I believe it was 2013. Mm -hmm. um, this time it was run for all high school students and students in grades 7th and 8th. Um, and what it does, it asks students various questions about their habits, um, their perceptions of a whole range of topics between substance abuse, alcohol abuse, um, dating, um, suicide. So a lot of key points are, are, are um, mm -hmm. touched upon. And so we, ha we hire an outside company that helps us process this data and it is shared with the community and um, it's become very useful in, for our group and for um, curriculum and anything else that we can really focus in on where the needs really are jumping out to us. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been, I think, quite valuable as an aid Mm -hmm. for now, have all those you, things. Have you ever had some unexpected data points that, that things that kind of shocked you or made you kind of think twice that as a result of this uh, of this survey? A, a behavior maybe that you weren't uh, 
uh, attuned to uh, uh, on the part of students? Um, yeah, I, I suppose there are trends that we expect um, may surprise us a little bit, um, and that's, I guess, a good thing because things that we now become aware yeah. of, we can really address in a in a better way. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, as far as being evaluating our programs, this is another great way to you know kind of gauge from the student's mouth, basically, um, yeah. Yeah. whether or not they're using marijuana or drinking more or, you know, so it's just, it's another way for us to really assess the effectiveness of our programs. Yeah, yeah. Now you have something called the All-Stars Prevention Program. So what, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what is the All-Stars Prevention uh, Program? Well, this is a program that is brand new to our district. Um, it's an evidence-based program that is um, supposed to affect some um, teach children about some positive lifestyle changes and um, in doing such prevent substance use along. So it, it sort of takes these basic premise that um, if you, if you um, model proper community norms and standards for kids and behaviors that this sort of gets them into a, a positive mode as far as um, making choices for themselves mm -hmm. as they travel through. So um, this came about last year. We actually were awarded some um, opio grant money through Family, the Opioid yeah. Prevention, the Attorney General's Office. Right, yeah. So we are just piloting this year. It's going to be only for sixth grade. And based upon our success um, and just sort of observations as to how this is going, we can maybe opt to, um, you know, further it in other grades. Mm -hmm. So Now, uh, the, the, the health curriculum that mm -hmm. is sort of through the, the, the grade schools and the middle school and, and the high school, how, what, what have you put into that that would reflect this, uh, this concern about <laughs> opioids and, and opioid academics and, 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 uh, uh, and, and drug use? Well, um, certainly a program similar to um, what I just described the All-Stars is. So what we've been looking at just sort of generally over the past couple of years is um, examining our scope and sequence of, of just the entire gamut, starting from roughly third grade on, and, and seeing how we can start to introduce some of this very basic information for students at that level. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, that's probably you know, still in the planning phase. Um, middle school, actually I met with middle school uh, at the end of last year, and because they have fifth grade um, this year, they're really revamping all of their curriculum and trying to um, make more of a continuum to have this information put in earlier and just build upon it. So by the time they get to high school, right. they will have a solid basis. Right, right. Well, Jim, thank you very much. And, and that brings me, last but not <laughs> least, uh, uh, my good friend Mark Thomas, their assistant principal. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll ask you to pick up where, where June left off with the, sure. the health curriculum and, and in, at the high school level where you are as assistant principal. Tell us how, how, what, uh, what's reflected in, in the health curriculum in the high school as, as regards uh, these kinds of things. Sure, the, the wellness staff, um, they, they really uh, do a preventative approach, um, a psychoeducational approach with, uh, with materials around substance use. Um, if someone you know or care about is using, what resources to, to connect them with. So that's, uh, that's the role of the, the wellness staff and the curriculum. Uh, they kind of weave into their general health classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you have uh, obviously uh, counseling, student counseling is, is, a, is a big issue and a big effort here. Uh, in, in the school, Mark. T tell us a little bit about the counseling staff and what kind of resources uh, you have and, and, and uh, about w what you do in that respect. Yeah, the other, I mean, one piece of what we do is the psychoeducational piece, but the other, the other side of that is um, the relationship and in, in, uh, mental health support, um, social emotional issues, um, you know, have really um, increased over the last handful of years, and, and we're fortunate enough we have we have a very um, strong counseling staff, um, three and a half adjustment mm -hmm. counselors. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a mental health counselor from Leahy that um, that is with us through a grant um, through the United Way, and then we have five guidance counselors as well. Mm -hmm. So um, there's there's a huge support staff, and the 
our basic premise as a school is building those um, individual relationships over the time students are here. Um, so when they are at a point of um, needing some support, that they have a go-to person. Yeah. Now you mentioned that the person from Leahy. Now is that person here in the high school during the the, the whole high school day? They are. Yeah. As, a, as a matter of fact, uh, the last handful of years, it was half of our school week, so about um, you know 15 to 17 hours, and this year uh, they got increased funding um, through the grant, and we have them for uh, full work week, so up to 30 hours. Yeah, so. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Now you have a student uh, support team which mm -hmm. meets, I think, on a weekly basis. Right. Tell, tell us about that. How does that work? Yeah, that's a, it's a meeting composed of school administration, our school resource officer, um, guidance counselors, um, the school nursing staff, and that, that group uh, meets weekly to discuss uh, students that may be at risk um, for a variety of reasons, not just substance abuse, but um, students that may need uh, a higher level of support than what they're getting on a regular basis. Yeah, and and so you you identify them, uh, uh, those individuals uniquely. I mean, they are, and then the and teachers, other teachers that may have have them in class, they're alerted. Uh, to this as well, or um, not necessarily. The counseling staff may work with the teachers, but um, the counseling staff is really the ones who uh, would follow through with that. And um, the the big piece is not only identifying those students, but making a plan for success for those students. And then the following week, when we um, when we meet again, revisiting that and evaluating that that right. uh, plan. Right. And you also have uh, some special education uh, programming for students to kind of deal with emotional issues of it, which may be precursors to, you know, them wanting to, to take substances or alcohol, or whatever. Tell us about that. Right. As, as many of us know, um, substance use is um, a maladaptive coping strategy. And um, so our programs that are built around social emotional issues, the teachers are really in tune to, um, you know, students that might be struggling uh, with different ways of, of coping with uh, their social emotional issues of being overwhelmed, uh, maybe some anxiety issues or depressive mm -hmm. issues that, that might um, cause them to um, use some uh, coping strategies that might not be the healthiest. Yeah. Now, is there uh, is this kept sort of uh, on, on a level where it's sort of private? I mean, is there any stigma uh, that students might feel if they feel that they're going, they're going to see somebody for these kinds of issues? Do, they, do you see any of that? Uh, we've worked really hard to to really reduce that stigma. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's always going to be there to to a point. Um, I, I think um, addressing mental health issues is always going to carry that, and um, we work really hard to to make it um, so the adjustment counselors and the guidance counselors and any other support people are an everyday part of our school and, and part of our daily um, you know functioning at the school. So trying to decrease that as much as possible. Yeah. Now, I know the school, uh, high school hosts a lot of um, community events mm -hmm. and, and special speakers, and I know that, uh, tell us about that and tell us about uh, a speaker that's coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Right, we, we had a speaker, Dr. Ruth Poti, uh, come in uh, last year, last spring, um, to speak to us um, at the high school level, and upon recommendation from many professionals and um, June and I actually mm -hmm. um, went and saw her speak at a, at a conference and that's yeah. where we kind of got the ball rolling here with that but um, what we wanted to do was get that to the middle school folks as well and she caters her her talk um, to I, I think she titled it the the teen brain under construction right. and, and maybe we can ask our uh, there we is, there so it is. teen yep, brain there under is, construction yeah. that might be a little hard to read for our viewers but go ahead tell us a little more about that um, She's a, she's a primary care physician from the western part of the state, and um, simply put, she she's pretty blunt with her information, and um, but in a way that um, you know you can kind of take in as a, as a parent and as a student, and um, really connects the dots between what what different substances can do to a developing brain, and and it's uh, you know it was well received when we did it in the spring, and um, we were able to. Uh, to get a version of her talk up on BevCam, and um, the feedback we got was, "Geez, I, I wish I had seen that. I, I didn't know it was yeah. going to be this, you know." And um, so we were able to, um, you know, I, I shouldn't say we. Um, the district was able to get the uh, the 
funds together to bring her back for um, the end of this month. So, yeah. and I can say I, I saw that uh, we we didn't tape it, but uh, we ran it on our channel. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, and we're going to tape this one for <laughs> our for our community here. But I can tell you that that she's very dynamic and she gets her points across. She's an excellent speaker and, and, and communicator, and really gets her points across to to anybody that listens to her, especially especially the students. Uh, and we're, we're kind of uh, getting short on time, Mark, but maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, the community night or maybe the school culture initiative here at the high school and, and give us a little bit of information about that. Yeah, I, I think the, the piece around school culture is an important one um, because the, the goal um, for us around the school is to, to really um, you know, personalize this, the day for each individual student and um, have them develop relationships with students. And that goes into school culture. But what that does is, um, you know, it, it goes all the way from the administrators to the counselors down to, to the teachers who are really in the trenches with the students. And a lot of times that's where we get our information from a, a concerned teacher that says, well, geez, I noticed this a little different with so-and-so today. And, and that's where those conversations start and, and um, those, those developed relationships where there's a trusting, uh, trusting high school student that's able to talk about something that's uh, not going well for them. Yeah. And tell us uh, briefly about, about staff training mm -hmm. in, in respect to, to the topic we're talking about. Yeah, as far as the staff goes, they, they do a really nice job. We have a protocol where they, they would speak to someone on the counseling staff if they were concerned about a student, and there's the ability to follow up um, from the counselors. And, and you asked about privacy of students. It, it gives us the opportunity for that student to speak about um, any issues um, without worrying about peers or, or somebody that they might not um, want to hear information um, without them being able to, without them getting caught up in, in the middle of it. And uh, so it's it's a protocol we go through and, and the teachers follow that and it works out really well. And um, students, you know, kind of go right along with that. They kind of understand okay. where that goes as well. Well, thank you for that. And I would like to uh, thank all of my guests here for a very informative uh, discussion. And uh, we have had Mark Thomas, who's the uh, assistant principal here at uh, Beverly High School, Chris Silverstein, Thank who's you. the president of the Beverly School Committee, uh, and uh, Sergeant Mark Penjuani from the, uh, the uh, Beverly uh, Police Department, and June Cases, who's the nurse leader of the Beverly Public Schools. Thank you all very much, folks, for a very informative presentation. And I'd like to uh, remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.